This Sydney Sweeney SNL stuff is wild. Let's debunk a video. Now, for the record, this channel is hypnotic. It is YouTube cancer. I suggest not approaching this channel. However, if you must, approach it with caution. Be very, very careful. Now, the title of this video is absolutely funny. Before we get into debunking it, it says, Sydney Sweeney saves the in intran ret. I'm not sure what the intran ret is. Um, not sure how her being on SNL saves these this this intran ret. Uh, I'm assuming they mean internet. Even so, SNL uh, TV show. Not really sure what the intranet or internet has to do with that. Uh, Madam Web actress praised for destroying wokeness on SNL. So I'm curious. Did she like go out and say something? like anti-woke. Uh, what did she do that was praising wokeness? Uh, newsflash, it's because she's a woman who shows off um, certain assets. And that's pretty much it. Let's, uh, let's jump into this video. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's very apparent that all it took for SNL to get back into the headlines was using Sydney Sweeney's boobs. I mean, opposed to what? Last week when they were the headlines for Shane? And other previous times where they were headlines for so many other things, uh, Bo and Yang uh, with the whole Dave Chappelle thing. I mean, they've been in the headlines a lot. Um, I don't know why this is any different to you, but I guess there's a there's a narrative you're going for. So let's see where this goes. In order to make it happen, I find this to be hilarious. This conversation is going around Sydney Sweeney because they're, they're people are trying to use it as a means of saying wokeness is dead. That's far from the truth, ladies and gentlemen. And while it is amazing to see Sydney Sweeney using all her goods up there to get what she wants and to get SNL what they want. Oh, it sounds like you are praising her for feminism. For a woman taking control of her body and using it in the way that she wants to. I have to say that's quite progressive from you, uh, Hypnotic, to praise a woman for uh, using her body the way she wants. Her body, her choice, right? Okay. Ultimately, I don't think wokeness is dead in the slightest, not yet anyway. So we have an article here from uh, Phantom Post with a headline that reads, Conservative commentator Richard Han Hanania, I don't know if I'm saying that right, says Sydney Sweeney's boobs on SNL proves that wokeness is dead now. All right, something interesting about Phantom Pulse is like it's connected to these guys. It's written by John Della Rose. So it is literally one of the chuds um, writing for this site. I guess he owns the site. So it's all of these guys sort of writing their own articles and then using these articles in a big like uh, circle jerk of anti woke content. So it, it would be like it quintessentially would be like me writing an article and then someone that I podcast with or somebody in my space taking that article and going, hey, I'm just going to repeat this article that someone in my space has already regurgitated and posted as if it's some like reliable source of information. Like literally it's just you regurgitating content from your own uh, community, which is, I don't know. It's, it's really fucking weird. Oh, if you guys didn't see the clip, I mean, I'll, I'll let my editor uh, put the clip up if you guys can. So that way they can see what exactly we're talking about. <laughs> but after seeing that clip, it's very obvious that, you know, while it's amazing, okay. It's absolutely amazing to see this clip and see everything that's going on. Uh, mm. Two very big reasons why the clip is going viral. Yes, I, I don't think wokeness is dead, okay? While it is definitely trending the other way, we are far from... It's not trending the other way. Um, I don't know why you would say that when you guys have just been grifting on so many, like, woke things recently, like Doritos, Sweet Baby Ink. Um, I think you've done, like, eight, nine videos about that. I'm looking at your page now. Final Fantasy Seven, uh, X-Men 97, which you guys are claiming is super woke. How can it be trending in the other direction if you're still making content saying that that all these things are woke I... from wokeness being dead unfortunately so it says uh, actress okay. sydney sweeney's recent saturday night live snl skit went viral after conservative commentator richard hananea weighed in on what a recent post on x wokeness is dead accompanied by an snl video clip prominently showcasing sydney sweeney's assets went viral so richard hananea later added sydney sweeney everywhere shows that you can give us all the fatness studies and body positivity you want society will always revert to loving blondes with boobs like communism you can suppress human nature but they will never win because it always comes back now this comment I do agree with 100%. It is true. They are... Surprise, surprise. Sex sells. I I know that's probably shocking. Maybe it's your... Like, you're finally realizing that, that it does sell. Because the conservative community is in this weird spot where too much sexuality and you guys flip out and complain about it. And then sometimes it's not enough sexuality. So I'm not really sure where you guys fall on that scale. But yes, uh, sex sells. It is a very common thing. It's probably one of the oldest practices in the world in terms of like 
making people pull money out of their pockets trying to push body positivity i mean look what happened with the recent x-men right like with the director openly admitting that they changed the female characters for body diversity yet they didn't change any of the male characters right it makes you that's not what they said again um completely misrepresenting the comments basically in that uh th what he's talking about is they were saying that they have learned how to make characters look different body shapes look different things like that in cartoons because of things that they've learned over the years so they don't all look the same uh none of the characters in the x-men 97 trailer look like there's some weird uh you know body shapes going on uh the whole thing about rogue's ass was completely disproven so that's a non-factor these guys can't let it go you wonder why that is and it's because they are trying to push this thing where being an overweight woman is somehow beautiful and accepted and don't get me wrong listen you could be who you want to be if you don't want to take take care of yourself that's fine you're an adult that's your choice if you want to live a shorter life i mean hey as long as you're okay with it i don't care personally but but no, you do, it is not healthy you do care because i mean you, you guys bring it up a lot it's it's a topic of conversation quite often when you want to use that as like a weapon towards people who don't look like they go to the gym every day which by the way it's kind of weird for someone who never shows himself on camera to talk about how somebody looks you're very self-conscious about the way you look and that's why you don't want to be on screen so it makes it really easy to throw stones when you are not showing uh your actual appearance on screen it never will be healthy it never will be accepted you're never going to be deemed beautiful by the masses most people will not look at you because ultimately like this guy says it's human nature it is human nature to look at beautiful things and say that's that's something to aspire to beauty is in the eye of the beholder it is all subjective so that none nothing you're talking about means anything honestly uh people love what they love and they don't have to justify it uh for you or anybody else and unfortunately, now you have even even health and beauty magazines are using extremely obese people to try to push some sort of body positivity thing. And while I understand the message, it falls flat on most people's ears. I'm just being honest with you. It really does. I just want to stop you there because there's already a health issue in this country. We already have a problem with people getting access to healthier foods. There's food deserts. There's all kinds of things that contribute to the health of our country that impacts it negatively. OK, that's first and foremost. Um, I don't think these magazines, these video games, these cartoons, uh, having people of different body shapes being in them is making someone who is fit and healthy, who goes to the gym every day, you know, sit back and say, you know what, I'm just going to eat a, a hundred Twinkies because there was a picture in a magazine of someone who isn't perfectly ripped. I don't think that's happening. It's a really dumb argument. Um, I don't see any proof of it. You're not offering any numbers here, anything. You're just doing what a lot of you guys do and sort of spin. And, and that's what's happening here. It comes off as forced. It comes off as disingenuous, which it is. And it comes off as, honestly, you're trying to push an unhealthy lifestyle for many different conspiratorial reasons. I mean, everybody has their ideas over why that is. It says Sydney Sweeney took center stage. Yeah, tinfoil hat stuff. It, I mean, what would be the purpose? What would be the purpose? What is the reason why? Don't just say that and then move on. What would be the reason why? Explain why. Why is it that these companies would be pushing these unhealthy ideas? Give me three sentences to explain it in quick, quick, fast, done. You know what I mean? The host of Saturday Night Live addressing the swirling rumors surrounding her life with a healthy dose of humor. The episode offered plenty of easy target for jokes. While Sweeney is admired for her charisma and appearance rather than her comedic prowess, her performance still elicits many laughs. Opening her monologue with a cheeky jab at the box office performance of Madam Web, the Marvel Sony venture she starred in, alongside Dakota Johnson, Sweeney quipped, you definitely did not see me in Madam Web. Embracing the opportunity to introduce herself beyond her on-screen personas, she remarked, I feel like people only see me as the girl on TV who screams, cries, and has sex. Sometimes it's all three at the same time. Sydney Sweeney's Saturday Night Live monologue was posted on X by official. Like, is is this you know why did these guys just sit and read articles from start to finish like why are we reading every single fucking line in this article why don't you pick out a few quotes some bullet points and talk about those instead of just reading the article so Saturday so night live x account sydney sweeney's monologue so a lot of people are saying that snl which it could be but SNL is using Sydney Sweeney to try to get back into the good graces of viewers. And listen, while that may be true or may not be true, ultimately, it does work that way, right? When you use a typical girl next door kind of blonde, right, who, who fits all the right boxes that most normal people want, yes, it will work and it will get viewers and it will at least get your show trending on Twitter, which is what... So, again, sex sells. So if you think that it's because she's super attractive and she has her tatas out, I mean, that's not a... I don't think that's some big secret. Secondly, them posting her monologue on Twitter 
I don't think it's a big deal. They have posted other monologues in the past. I think Shane's monologue was posted from last week. They they typically post monologues or at least portions of monologues on their Twitter account. I don't think that's some big like, oh, look at what they're doing here. They're posting Sydney Sweeney. They've never done that before. It's so disingenuous. It, it sounds like you don't even know what you're talking about, which I mean we saw so yes this stuff does work and it makes you it makes you wonder if this stuff works right why do all of these studios why do all these development studios and gaming why do all these these american comic books why do they constantly push stuff that nobody wants to see right that's when you start going down the rabbit hole of black rock that's when you start going down the rabbit hole of sweet baby ink that's when you start going down mm. multiple different rabbit holes because ultimately you have to imagine these businesses want money these business so you just said a minute ago that wokeness is trending down but now we're back to the big bad wokeness boogie person with like all of these conspiracy theories. All the stuff you mentioned there, all the companies, which by the way, some of them aren't even the same. One's a consulting firm. The other one uh, is an investment thing. Like they're, they're different things. Ultimately, at the end of the day, they want to make money. They want to make money because how do how I, I'm trying to like wrap my head around this. Why would they purposely make content that nobody wants to see, but at the same time, be as wealthy as they are? Okay, have you looked at how much BlackRock is worth? How would a company like that have so much accumulated wealth if they were just making stuff that nobody wanted to see and nobody was paying for? Why? What would be the purpose of that? What would be the purpose of any of these companies doing that? You talk about how greedy corporations run the world and they're so powerful because they have so much money. And then on the other side of that, you're like, but they're making content that nobody's paying for. Nobody's spending money on. Nobody wants to see this. I, I, are are, the, are is, is stuff not firing up here? Is it is like, are you so lost in the conspiracy theories that you're not even listening to what you're saying? Businesses want profit. If you are doing things that actively go against profitability, then there has to be another reason. And that's when all of these uh, rabbit holes start to expose themselves. So what other reasons? What, power? Money and power go hand in hand. They walk side by side by putting out stuff that nobody likes and diminishing the trust of investors, diminishing the trust of the public. Like you guys aren't uncovering some big massive secret with this stuff they want to make money they want to put out things that make money sometimes they make bad decisions that's it that's it like everything like this idea that everything is connected and it's all tinfoil hat stuff man like get out of your house go out in the real world live in the real world a little bit it says, reflecting on her origins in Spokane Watch, Sweeney, uh, Sweeney recounted her strategy for breaking into Hollywood to her parents. She illustrated her plan with a chart labeled audition, indicating her primary approach. However, in case plan A failed, she jokingly revealed her backup plan depicted on a second chart, boobs. <laughs> well, they worked. Hailing from Spokane Watch. So that's it? You just, like, <laughs> like boobs is it? That's, that's, what, that's why she's successful and popular? Okay. Washington, Sweeney shared a playful anecdote about her connection to neighboring Idaho, humorously navigating uncomfortable situations by clipping Idaho when faced with inquiries about her background, including inquiries about a controversial Trump thing party for her mom's birthday. Addressing online rumors head on, Sweeney laughed off accusations of fabricating her stint as a host on the Universal Studios tram tour, showcasing her knowledge of fictional characters like Schrock and Harry Potter. She then Schrock and Harry Potter. It's not Harry Potter. That's the, the joke is Harry Potter. Okay. And dispelled rumors of an alleged affair with co-star Glenn Powell and anyone but you, affirming her strong relationship with her fiancé, who was present in the audience, much to the audience's amusement. It was not just Richard Hananea that took notice of her appearance on SNL. R uh, Rivellino, the creator of the Green Line Test, gave his opinion on X. Don't lean in, Sydney Sweeney. <laughs> so again, it, it's very, like, we make jokes about this, right? We do make jokes about this, but ultimately... You make jokes about it because it's not serious for you guys. It's not a serious thing. You don't take this seriously. Uh, you realize that it's all a way for you to, like, make the video talk shit about something, spend like six, seven minutes doing it, then walk away and, and go do something else in your house. Like it's not, it doesn't matter to you. There's, there's no, you're not putting anything on the line, especially you guys that get on here with VTuber like pictures and stuff. There's, you're not putting anything out there. There's no risk involved for you. It's like, you're not even a real person. Like, how do I take someone seriously if I can't even See the person that's criticizing the way somebody looks. See the person that's talking about how fitness and all this is 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 important, and that you know boobs this, boobs that. Like like how do you like? It's there's nothing being put on the line. You have no dog in the fight whatsoever. If you were to shut your channel down tomorrow and walk away from the internet without telling anybody who you are, showing who you are, the anonymity of that is just there, and there's no investment. There's no investment at all. 
it's true. Like this stuff works, right? This stuff clearly works. And again, I don't know why these studios Sex actively sells. go against what works. It's very clear that you can try to fight human nature all you want. Like uh, Hananea says, you can try to fight human nature all you want, but it's just not, that's just not going to work, right? That's not going to work. It's just like he said with communism. The reason why communism continues to fail, at least over here anyway, because you constantly try to fight human nature. And you think in all those communistic countries that they don't like beautiful women, really? You think that, you think that that stuff clearly? I don't know what it is with the, um, and we're going to, we're done with the video here. I don't know what it is with these guys that have them thinking that progressive people like people on the left whatever don't like beauty i don't know where that came from that we don't like tatas that we don't like attractive people like i'm not really sure where that came like how that came about because it doesn't really seem to make any sense to me like again if you're going to throw out accusations saying that there's some insidious thing going on then you need to explain what that is what is it what would be the purpose of people going out of their way to push unattractive narratives to push unhealthy narratives what is the purpose of this and i'm not talking about some weird mysterious like thing going on like give me an answer if you want me to be on board with what you're talking about it can't be some wackadoodle nonsense it has to be real and honest newsflash they don't have any real honest answers.